Welcome back to our fifth episode of Happy Hour. I'm Chris Cassie. And I'm Larry Kegwin. We are the co-founders of the Green Box Arts Festival. And today is an extra happy hour, and we have a happy, happy surprise to share. It's really big news. I don't even know where to begin. Well, over the last 12 years, each summer, Green Mountain Falls, Colorado has come alive with joyful dance, thrilling music, and captivating installation art. All of these components, plus a thousand participants, makes Green Box Arts Festival one of the most interesting and popular summer arts festival in Colorado. A few years ago, we began to consider the idea of having a permanent year-round art installation here in Green Mountain Falls. We thought this would be interesting not just for festival goers and full-time residents of Green Mountain Falls, but also for art pilgrims from around the world. So Chris, tell our viewing audience what you've been thinking about. Well, I've always admired the work of James Terrell and thought his work could be appropriate not only because of how original his work is, but also because of his values as a human being. We love his interest in astronomy and are very captivated by his commitment to the dark sky certification for communities, which he helped his hometown of Flagstaff, Arizona achieve. If we don't jump on board and help turn down some of the light in our cities, future generations may never be able to see the stars. I first came across a James Terrell piece while wandering around the campus of Rice University. I got terribly lost, and then I happened to stumble upon this great structure. Lo and behold, it was a James Terrell arts piece. It was titled Twilight Epiphany. Fast forward many years later, Chris approaches me and says, I, I'm thinking of this idea of commissioning a sky space for Green Mountain Falls. I was all on board. And last year, we had the fun opportunity to meet with him in Flagstaff, Arizona. Yes, that's correct. We're on a mission for the historic Green Mountain Falls to talk with him about the possibility of this commission. And meeting Mr. Terrell was the highlight of our trip to Flagstaff. I think we have a photo from that visit. If so, let's show it to our viewers. And just for posterity's sake, I also have a photo of him taken in 1967. Wow, he was so handsome. I mean, he's still very handsome and captivating and interesting. I loved our conversation with him. You know, my dad also taught astronomy for the Boy Scouts. And um, so I've always had an interest in astronomy and he, I was able to keep up with the conversation because James is very interested in astronomy and stars and, and lots of other things. Yes, I agree. This photo from 1967 actually reminds me that Mr. Terrell was a critical figure emerging from Los Angeles' exploding art scene of the 1960s. What other artists were part of that movement? Well, Larry, now I'm not a contemporary art historian, so let's save that question for our interview with Liz Sullivan from Pace Gallery in Los Angeles. But Ed Ruscha does come to mind. In fact, I think they both would be categorized as artists from the New West, but also um, the Beat Generation. Those were the cool kids of their time. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. So is it true? Are we bringing a, a James Terrell piece to here in Green Mountain Falls? <laughs> yes, drum roll please. Pending all of the proper approvals, we're aiming for summer of 2021 for the opening. Wow, fingers crossed. How, how are we gonna manage all that? Listen, uh, the historic Green Mountain Falls Foundation is going to own the piece and the Green Box Arts Festival will administer it, taking care of the programming, the maintenance and whatnot. Chris, this is wonderful news. This will be the first Terrell sculpture, not only in Green Mountain Falls, but in the entire state of Colorado. I'm so proud. I really am. I think people are going to enjoy this for years and years to come. Shall we go inside to celebrate and have a toast with champagne? Let's do. Great, let's do it. This evening, we have so much to celebrate and to be grateful for. Rather than introducing you to a new drink or a new wine, we wanted to take this opportunity to invite all of our viewers to join us in a toast to all the ladies and gentlemen who are working so hard to make the new James Terrell Sky Space a reality. So projects of this magnitude require hundreds of hours of research, engineering, architecture, and of course, construction. We're most thankful to Mr. Terrell for allowing us to bring his vision to Green Mountain Falls in such a beautiful and important way. Let's toast, let's make a <laughs> toast. Let's to all the people who are helping make this a reality, to bringing this sky space to Green Mountain Falls, Colorado, a reality. Thank you so much. You bet. And Larry, thank you for getting us such a nice bottle of champagne. May I do the honors? Please. Whoa! Party. <laughs> 
Cheers. Cheers. To Mr. Terrell, thank you, and to our viewers. Thank you so much. Delish. James Terrell was born in 1943. Both of his parents were Quakers. His father was an aeronautical engineer and his mother was a doctor. He was a conscientious objector during the Vietnam War. He received his Bachelor of Arts degree from Pomona College in Perceptual Psychology in 1965. He also studied in depth mathematics, geology, and astronomy. He began his studio art program at the University of California in Irvine. Here's an example of his work in England. This piece was built in the year 2000 on a rocky outcrop overlooking the water and the park along the Scottish border. It was refurbished in 2018 to include a new LED lighting system. Here is what the space looks like on the inside. During the 2018 refurbishment, the paint that had been on the seat backs was removed to show the concrete, which was what the artist originally intended. Another example of his work was built in 1974 for Giuseppe Panza, one of Terrell's first patrons. It was commissioned to create a sky space at Villa Panza in Lombardy, Italy. Robert Irwin also produced a commission during this time. We'll find out more about him later in our show. In 2013, Mr. Terrell completed his 84th sky space on the rooftop deck of the Student Activity Center at the University of Texas in Austin. Built in 2012, the Twilight Epiphany Sky Space at Rice University in Houston is one of the largest. It can hold up to 120 people on two different levels. It was acoustically engineered to host musical performances. Other examples of his work include projection pieces, part of a series which was first exhibited at the Pasadena Museum of Art in 1967. This piece, entitled Bridget Bardot and built in 2009, is a hollow construction divided into two interconnecting chambers, the viewing space and the sensing space. Both spaces are completely empty and flooded with colored light. Mr. Terrell purchased the land for the Roden Crater in 1977 in Prescott, Arizona. It's the site of an extinct volcano that he is turning into a web of underground sky spaces. When work is completed, there will be 21 viewing spaces and six tunnels. Other contemporaries and influences include Mark Rothko's work and the idea of the sublime. He began experimenting with light when the Light and Space Group was active in Los Angeles. This group included Robert Irwin, Mary Corse, Doug Wheeler, and Larry Bell. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. This evening, we're going to be speaking with Liz Sullivan from the Pace Gallery. Pace Gallery represents James Terrell. Hi, Liz. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure working with you on this new installation for Green Mountain Falls. Where are you calling from? Hi, Larry. So good to be here. I'm calling in from sunny Palo Alto, California. Liz, it's happy hour. Chris and I are celebrating with some champagne. What are you drinking? Thank you so much for having me here for your happy hour. Um, to celebrate, I have a wonderful glass of rosé from Provence, so cheers. It was so nice meeting you last summer in Flagstaff, Arizona, when we visited Mr. Terrell's studio. Tell us a little bit about your working relationship with Mr. Terrell. How long have you been working together? Hi, Chris. Great to be here as well, and thank you so much for having me. Um, it was so wonderful to meet you and Larry in Flagstaff, Arizona, and to sit down with James Terrell and discuss your upcoming commission uh, that you'll be doing in Green Mountains, Colorado. It is really a beautiful project, and everyone is so excited. I have been working for Pace Gallery for 21 years now, and 15 of those years I have worked with James Terrell. I can still remember the first day meeting James like it was yesterday. I was in awe of his work for such a long time. And my boss had said, you know, it's really would be wonderful if you could start working with James. So uh, I was so nervous. I was probably as red as an apple. But I went into the meeting and I met he and his wife. And it was just such a beautiful thing. They made me put me right at ease. And we talked about many things. And for over these 15 years, James has brought me to amazing places. And we've done wonderful projects and museum shows and gallery shows. And it's just been a wonderful journey. And James really, I have to say, has taught me so much about art and light. And the light, not only from the sky, but within ourselves. And it's just been a beautiful journey. And I hope to continue it for many years. Larry and I were just talking about artists that we consider to be a part of the new West, a new generation of artists inspired by nature. 
In many ways, we think of Mr. Terrell as the father of this movement. Are there other artists, one or two, that you might think of? James Terrell is definitely inspired by nature, and he really is um, a true master of light and space. His ability to harness light from nature is really like no other. And through his works, I would really say that the viewer not only has a new understanding about light and seeing its beauty, but he also opens us up, really, like I was saying, to seeing the beauty in ourselves. And his works really do this. I would say that other artists that, you know, definitely are from the um, light and space movement, uh, the ones that come to mind are Robert Irwin, um, John McCracken, uh, Mary Course, Larry Bell, uh, Craig Kaufman, and I'm sure I'm missing a few others, but they are definitely ones that come to mind in this light and space movement. Um, when I think of Mr. Terrell also, though, I also am reminded of those artists that are really deeply immersed in art or earth land projects. Um, two people that come to mind that I think are really important pieces are Robert Smithson, who uh, is famous for his work called The Spiral Jetty. Um, Robert Smith then created um, a jetty uh, using black rock and dirt, which he had put in a formation of a jetty. It's about, I think it's 1,500 square feet long, and it is actually in Utah in the um, Great Salt Lake. And uh, this piece is amazing because when you're confronted with it, it's not only immense, but you only see it at certain times because when the um, tide recedes, of course, it reveals itself, and when the tide comes in, it disappears. But it's one of those works that deals with the land, and like James's Rodin Crater Project, uh, these are just amazing land art projects. And another one that comes to, um, to my mind when I think of James Terrell and other Western artists uh, that also is in this earth art project is the work of Walter Di Maria. And in 1977, um, he created a work in New Mexico uh, where he polished these steel poles and um, he formate, formed them into grid. And I think each pole is a little over seven feet uh, in height. And the formation is a true grid. And what's beautiful is you're not only confronted with the grid in nature, but also, of course, when lightning strikes, you're confronted with those too. So it's just another work that I think that's so significant and is really a destination that you go uh, in the land art sense. So it's very reminiscent of James's work as well. Well, that was fascinating. Thanks for sharing. Let's get back to Terrell, though. Please tell us a little bit more about the sculpture that we're working on in Green Mountain Falls. Is there a title or what can you share with us? The work coming to the beautiful landscape of Green Mountains is a sky space by Mr. Terrell. The work now is right now being created, but I can tell you a little bit about it. Um, it will be an autonomous structure, which relates to the landscape. The actual architectural piece is specifically portioned room with an aperture in the ceiling, which will open to the sky. So visitors will come and enter the structure and sit and observe the sky. It will be really a true place for meditation and contemplating light. So it's very exciting. So I can't reveal everything, but that gives you a little bit of an idea of it. Um, I think it's only apt now to give a quote by James Terrell because he says things always so perfectly. Um, the quote is, my desire is to set up a situation to which I take you and let you see. It becomes your experience. And I believe Green Mountains will truly be that. So we all look forward to seeing it and very excited. Can't wait. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of his most outrageous commissions? I would love to tell you about some of James Terrell's outrageous commissions, but of course, a lot of private, so I can't tell everything, but I will say he's done some amazing works all over the world. Uh, for example, in case you find yourself in Tasmania, um, you can go visit the Museum of Old and New. It's called Mona, and the museum was started by a man named David Walsh, and he is he has um, commissioned four works by James, and it's definitely a destination I would recommend for people to go. Uh, one of the works in the collection is, I think it's over 21 feet, and it's called a perceptual cell, and it's a work, it's a circular work where you actually go into uh, the chamber and the door closes and you lie down on a bed, which you experience light and perceptive in a whole new way. 
I can't reveal much more, but it's an amazing experience. They also have a sky space there in a Gansveld and other pieces as well that is definitely worth going if you're in Tasmania. But then again, you can find yourself in Mexico in the Yucatan, where he created a pyramid work called Aqua de Luz in uh, 2011. It was an amazing feat creating this pyramid and where he's, it involves the land and the sea. So another amazing experience. But then again, you can find yourself in Texas at Rice University, where he erected a beautiful outside sky space called Twilight Epiphany. And there are many more. And I would say that there should be an exclusive Terrell passport that takes you to all these wonderful places that especially open to the public. But I would like to add that Green Mountains will definitely be on this list. And it's very exciting that this will be a true destination to go as well. Well, those are some outrageous projects. And speaking of which, did I hear that Mr. Terrell is working on something special in Arizona? Something about a crater? Can you share? Uh, the rodent crater, it's truly one of my favorite subjects with James Terrell. Um, the rodent crater is truly James Terrell's magnus opus. In the, to tell you a little background about it, in the 1970s, um, James, who's also an aviator, was flying over western Arizona and discovered the site for his masterpiece. The site was an extinct volcano, and this area now, for over the past 50 years, he's been making into a naked observatory. Uh, the rodent crater, I would say, is truly the culmination of Mr. Terrell's lifelong research into the field of human visual and psychological perception and really a gateway to the contemplation of light, time, and landscape. Uh, Mr. Terrell has created a true engineering feat with the rodent creator. Um, what you see as you go through, and he's created chambers and tunnels that constantly lead you to the top of the crater. Um, unfortunately, it's not open to the public right just yet, but um, it is going under construction and with continued fundraising and the construction that's going on, one day the work will be open to the public. But I did want to mention that you can support um, Mr. Terrell's crater if you look into the Skystone Foundation and you can become a friend of the Roden Crater. So you can look at that on the website of the Skystone Foundation and give your support if you like and just find out more about uh, the site and James Terrell. And I just want to say that one day, hopefully we'll all be there together. <laughs> Liz, thank you so much. I think that's a wrap, but I look forward to welcoming you and Mr. Terrell to Green Mountain Falls to celebrate with you live in 2021 for the opening of the sculpture. It's going to be terrific. Thank you so much for making it possible, yeah? Larry, Chris, this has been wonderful. And thank you so much for making me part of your happy hour to talk about James Terrell. Thank you, take yeah. care. And viewers, thank you so much for tuning in for this episode for our conversation about Mr. James Terrell and his installation in Green Mountain Falls, Colorado. Wanted to remind you to be sure and check the credit section after this episode. All the information you might need about the artists that we talked about are available there as well as social media contacts. If you have questions or concerns, please feel free. Again, thank you for joining us. And until next time, thank you and cheers. Yep. Cheers. A toast. To 2021 and a new sky space in Green Mountain Falls. Which will be fantastic. That's right. But let's not forget, you got to support your local artist and what? And be kind to animals. Happy hour with Chris and Larry. Scene 14, take one. <laughs> yes. This is a celebration. Celebrate the good times. times. Come on. Ba -na -na. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, big boy. Yahoo! Oh <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> the episode is over. <laughs> Let's redo that. I got my. I got everything. That was good. Right. Like a baby. <laughs> Don't scream my name. It scares me when you say that. Chris! Chris. Chris! <laughs> Let me propose a toast. What do you think? We're playing footsies. <laughs> Stop it. Sun's coming out, got cakes on the griddle. <laughs> Life ain't coming but a funny, funny riddle. <laughs> Liberty Viberty. Only Liberty. Baby what you need. This, is, this person is driven by five times. And why they're wearing a mask alone in their car. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That was a good take. That was a pretty good take, right? Except for my bulging eyeballs idea of, of commissioning one. This is fine. I got to stick to the script. the script. I got to, I got it. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about some of his more outrageous commissions? Like maybe swimming pools? 
our bathrooms, our stairs, or bedrooms. <laughs> Any hot tubs? <laughs> all right. To Logan so for good. directing us all so beautifully. Cheers. Here, here. So so much. Much. We commissioned four <laughs> of the youngest, hottest, newest artists oh here gosh. in Green Mountain Falls. Oh, that's <laughs> And they painted the two stars. <laughs> Happy hour of I'm Chris scared. and Larry. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god, that's amazing! That's great. Oh my god, you guys are awesome! I love that! That is so good! Gotta go in the salt box. Are you serious? Who did this? The, the four youngest, hottest artists here in Green Mountain Falls. Carlos! Are you serious? Carlos, the that's best. amazing! Oh! This, so this is, is so obviously good. Ollie and Mr. And B. B. Oh my gosh, I am so. That's Look awesome, at this. you guys. I love that. You guys are great. Logan, you are an artist. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh my god, this. Thank you guys so much. That's thank so you so much. Well, there's yeah. a beer on me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Drinking. What else, Chris? <laughs> Let me go. Oh, I'm done.